Hi, and thanks for watching. This video is for beginner ProPresenter 7 operators, especially for those who are going to be on Mac OS and aren't really familiar with Mac OS, or maybe you just haven't been on a computer in a while. I'm going to go over a couple of key things that are differences between Windows and Mac OS, and then just kind of some of the things that I've noticed people get hung up on. I've done, you know, quite a few trainings over the years on Mac OS, so uh, there's a couple of things that people... Um, get kind of hung up on like I said so anyway let's just dive right in so down here at the bottom is the dock now the dock unlike Windows which has all the open programs at the bottom uh, the dock actually allows you to launch programs so for instance Safari here is not open and I can tell that because there's no little dot underneath it so once I click it it's open now we see the dot and actually you might have noticed that it changed the name up here in the menu bar well, um, I'll get to that in a second. So the dock is like a launch area. Now, obviously not all of my programs are in the dock. It's just those that I use on a regular basis. So we can use the dock as a way of just navigating between programs that we use all the time. Now, of course, over here I have my downloads folder and applications, and this is where I would drag things to the trash. Um, and then we have a little recents section. So... Um, I was just doing some video editing, and so DaVinci Resolve is there, but I don't have DaVinci open on this computer very much, so I just leave it in the Applications folder. All right, um, so that's the dock. Now, another way to get around on the Mac or to change between programs is to use a little shortcut with the Command Tab. So if you hold the Command key, which is right next to Spacebar, and then you tap the Tab key, it'll bring up this little navigation bar and you can highlight uh, by using your mouse and then let go of, uh, of command and it'll switch for you or you can just tap the tab key and it'll cycle through or if you go to the key right above it'll go backwards that's the tilde key it'll go backwards so pretty handy little trick and if you're just trying to quickly get between programs you can just do it real quick and uh, it's it's pretty helpful all right, so up here at the left-hand side, again, you'll notice that I have uh, ProPresenter here, or if I switch over to Safari, it's it's right here. This is one that um, a lot of people get hung up on, and they don't notice that, say, if they close this window here for Safari, they're thinking, uh, because they're so used to Windows, that the program is now closed. Well, that's not actually true. And for the most part, that's not true on a Mac OS. There are some programs that when you close the window, it closes the program. But by and large, if you close the window, that doesn't necessarily mean the program is closed. So you actually have to come up here and go down to the quit Safari or hit Command Q, and then you will have quit out of that program. Now, the reason that this is important is because let's say you're doing something here, you're setting up the YouTube channel or something, and you close that window and you think, okay, all I can see is ProPresenter. And so ProPresenter must be the main program. It's the program on top. And your pastor goes to click on the remote and they get nothing. Well, that's because they're actually on Safari. So when they press that, what is basically a keyboard command, it's not being sent to ProPresenter. So you can either click on ProPresenter, the, the window itself, and it'll switch over, or you can just, you know, quit out of the program. It's pretty pretty simple there. So um, it's just, that's something to be aware of. And, uh, you know, it's something I think catches even those of us who are really familiar with Mac OS that can catch us off guard. So it's just something to keep your eye on. All right, so the other thing with navigating is the Finder app. So the Finder app is where all your files are. This is how you find, you know, different uh, music that you have, or maybe you guys have a folder with a bunch of programs, or like I've got a bunch of recordings here. Um, this is also where I would access my flash drives. So this is our pastor's flash drive with all the sermon slides on it. So this is where I would go to get access to that. And of course I have that in the dock. This is the one program that always stays in the dock. You'll, you can't remove it from the dock. So, um, you'll always be able to find it there. All right. So in the top left here, we have our Apple menu. This is kind of like the start menu. You have things like sleep, restart, shut down. 
Um, you have your system preferences here, but obviously you're not launching programs from this menu. This is really just system-wide stuff. Uh, you can bring up your serial number and all that kind of thing through here, do some system reports through about this Mac. Um, you can bring up your system preferences. This is something um, that you should probably get familiar with if you're using the Mac at all. Um, the main one I would say for ProPresenter 7 operators is this guy right here, the displays. So let's open that up. And you'll notice that we have an extended desktop layout for our displays. So we have our main display, we have our camera operators display, we have our projector, which says projector, and then we have our stage display. And of course I have a different desktop background for each of those just so that I have some kind of indication when I look at the screen itself, you know, does the picture match what I'm expecting and you know that indicates some kind of problem or or that it's just working correctly. So one reason this is important is um, for, you know, just being able to troubleshoot. So if you go into your screen configurations, you'll see that same layout. You know, so I know display one is my camera operator's display, display two is my projector, and so on. So that's, that's one reason it's important. That gets into some more advanced stuff. But the main reason I bring it up is because there's sometimes when your mouse will actually wander off the screen. And you'll be like, man, I can't find my mouse. I can't find my mouse. And it's really because this is like one giant screen. So your mouse can actually go over to these other screens. This extended desktop view is really meant to give people a larger desktop to work with. So you can have multiple programs open and, you know, say you have your web browser on one screen and you have, you know, a word processor on another screen and you have, you know, stock market stuff on another screen or whatever. Um, I don't know what people do, but in any case, ProPresenter uses it to have their projector or, you know, in our case, we have a, you know, another screen a stage display layout for our camera operators, stuff like that. So um, you just have to think of this as one giant screen. Now the cool thing is, is that if you happen to wander off the screen, let's say you're on ProPresenter here, if you just hold Option, which is next to the command key, and then tap the M, it'll bring your mouse back to the center of this main ProPresenter view here. So it's actually a ProPresenter uh, hotkey. It's not a Mac OS thing, but it obviously works on Mac OS. So if you can't find your mouse, the first thing you should do is just press option M and you'll find it right away. So that's pretty cool. All right. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things up here on the right hand side. And this is for, you know, our operators. So they kind of get an idea for what's going on over here. But there's a couple of things that if you don't have, um, and you're from another church, I definitely recommend having these things on your uh, menu bar up here. So first of all is I have the seconds running. Now, I think out of the box, you don't have the seconds on your clock. I, I find it useful. Um, this way I can count down to the service time and I can keep an exact time. So I know exactly when the service is going to start. Now we have some clocks and stuff on our displays and all that, but this is super useful. All right. Enough said about that. Um, then we have just this little mini calendar. There's tons of different ones out there, but I find that useful. And then some of these things that you can either leave in your menu bar or take out or like your sound. So I find that to be useful in case something's wrong. I can quickly access that. Same with the Wi-Fi can turn it on and off if I need to. And then this little guy, this little coffee cup here, this is a program called Amphetamine, um, which isn't a great name for a church, but um, it's it's uh, basically keeps your computer awake during a certain period. So right now I have an hour and 29 minutes left in this session, uh, but if I go ahead and end that, that that'll help us. All right, so... Um, we actually have a few automation set up, so they call them triggers in this, but on Sunday morning and Wednesday night when we have church, um, I have it automatically set up to wake up and stay awake. So it's pretty useful. Uh, this way, if you, if you walk away from the computer, you know, go get your cup of coffee after you've done your run through in the morning or whatever it is, and uh, you just want to make sure the computer doesn't fall asleep, 
this is a really simple program to use and and really uh, helpful. So, you know, let's say you're doing a, a wedding or a funeral or something like that. You can manually trigger it as well. So you can come down here and say you need it for two hours. You can click on it, and then there you go, just like before. You see that timer there. Um, this is our remote, so just thought I'd point this out. This Logitech remote has worked really well for us, the R500. And then, of course, I have these. Uh, this is called, let me see here, menu bar stats. So this is our CPU usage, our memory usage, which is really low because we have a ton of memory, um, probably overkill. And then this is our GPU usage. And this is the important one for us that I like to keep an eye on. And um, the reason for that is this is where we've bottlenecked in the past. We've really pushed our GPU hard. And that's because we're running so many screens. If you look down here, I actually have six different screens always being generated by Pro, Pro Presenter. So, um, you know, these may not be on a display anywhere necessarily, but if they're in this menu, they're being generated. So um, that's what kind of bogs us down. That and that we're using this extended desktop, um, this extended desktop. These, these have to be constantly generated by Mac OS as well. So that uses up a bunch of the graphics. So if you're on a deck link, I think that actually mitigates that problem. Um, but I don't, know from experience we we're going to be switching over to deck link here pretty pretty soon once our new sanctuary is built but uh that's another story all right so um that's really cool little program to have very useful and then uh particularly for our operators this is where you find stream deck um so if you're on the wrong uh presets for that that's where that would be all right so the last thing that i wanted to talk about was the mouse. And that may be kind of a weird way to end this video, but uh, it's something that people get hung up on and understandably so. When you're used to Windows, you have two buttons and you usually have like a little scroll wheel and then you get on a Mac and you have this smooth surface mouse. So with a Mac, you either have a trackpad or you have a magic mouse. And on the magic mouse, it's completely smooth, but the mouse can tell by touch where your fingers are. So you can still right click, you can still scroll, you can uh, obviously left click, but um, you can still use some of those things. You can even do some gestures on the magic mouse, but your basic functions are the same. On the trackpad, it's the same, except for that scrolling and right click is done with two fingers instead of one finger. So if I wanna right click something, I just click with two fingers. And if I want to scroll, I just scroll with two fingers. And there are some options for that. So again, in system preferences, let's go to mouse. Um, and we can change some of that stuff. So uh, same with the trackpad, you don't have to use you know, your secondary can be, you know, bottom right corner. So if you're a Windows user and you want to change that, you know, that's fine. Just uh, don't do it on my computer. Do it on your computer because I like the way I like it. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> hey, you know, worship leader's got to have his prerogative. So in any case, um, I think that's it for this video. I've probably uh, worn out my welcome enough uh, with this. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have anything to add, if you're watching this from another church or, you know, from our church and you're like, hey, you know, when I got on Mac OS, the first thing that really threw me for a loop was X, then go ahead and throw that in the comments below. If you have any questions, also comment. And then of course, subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching. God bless.